the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Oh, so many damn losers. Place your bets. I believe it made Fade 5 history yesterday. I didn't win a single wager featured on yesterday's show, Lundy. Not a single one. Now, granted, I had Jacoby Brissett, as I mentioned yesterday, on the over nine and a half rush yards. So, cha-ching, kind of. Uh, I made at least one unit back there, but I'm already down 4.40 units if you're tracking the old spreadsheet on Twitter at Noisy Cuevos. Uh, Lundy has his own spreadsheet. He hated this game, didn't wager a whole lot on it, and hit on a parlay, so thank God for him. At Nate Lundy, make sure you follow all his picks there. Uh, But it was a miserable start yet again uh, for an NFL week, week number three this time. And I also lost my wager on Georgia State uh, straight up against Coastal Carolina. So uh, it is an 0 for start, and I am bleeding cash as a result. Well, here's the thing, Brad. I've actually uh, realized what the problem is. Um, I have put on my Doogie Hauser MD uh, jacket. Um, I've got the stethoscope. I have been able to diagnose the problem with one Brad Evans. And it is because even though, even though we continue to use the hashtag, Brad, uh, you have not been able to partake in hashtag tequila Thursday since your accident. No. And no, I think I can't. actually why your bets are so fucked up uh, is because you're not able to get effed up. Uh, so I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just saying maybe uh, you are one of those individuals. Um, you know, it's sort of like, uh, you know, you go back in the day with uh, those of you that uh, enjoyed um, uh, some of the good television, some of the different movies that he did. Uh, Aaron Sorkin got in trouble. Uh, what, about a, a decade and a half ago because he was doing like psychedelic shrooms and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and so he got like, he got in trouble in Hollywood because they were like, you can't do that. And I'm sitting back going, dude, if you can write the screenplay for a few good men, if you can develop the West wing, if you can write the screenplay for an American president, if you can do all of that and it takes you shrooms to do it by all means, my man, I'm not here to judge you, but Brad, I think that might be your problem. Maybe because of the accident that you are still working on your recovery from, uh, maybe that's actually why your Thursday picks have sucked so bad. Yeah, screw sobriety. I hate it so much. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? We're going to write the ship. We're going to appease the gambling gods. Daddy wants. Daddy need. Daddy got to have it. Let's get some winners. Let's make it happen. We just implore it with the sledgehammer. And all right. All right. Do, fine. Let's fine. Let's, let's get into it here. College football pick Ooh. to click Lundy. Uh, What is tops on your board? And you cannot say you're Oregon State Beavers who have a small contest against USC. Well, I I will stay away from that one, although (laughs) it's like the (laughs) most bet game of the weekend. Uh, I saw a stat from Caesars Sportsbook yesterday afternoon that there are more bets on the Oregon State USC game than there are on 14 out of the 16 NFL games this weekend. That's how popular uh, the game in Corvallis is going to be. But yes, I'm staying away from that one, although I will be stressed out to the nines uh, (laughs) tomorrow night. Um, Let me give you one here to start off, and then I've got a couple for you uh, coming up later on in uh, bonus time. I'm telling you, People are still sleeping on the Jayhawks, Brad. They are yeah. still sleeping on the Jayhawks in what will be a football version of a rematch of the Final Four in the Big Easy. Uh, Duke will be uh, in Lawrence to take on Kansas. Kansas is only laying seven. I'm taking it. I say the Jayhawks win this thing by 10. Um, both of these teams are undefeated. It's actually really weird. If you saw the stat earlier this week, Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina, and Duke the four big fours uh, of the Blue Bloods of college basketball are actually all 3-0 and on the football field as well. It's crazy. Um, but in this particular case, Kansas is coming back home. They have not played at home in three weeks. I think that student body crowd is going to be there. I think Duke um, is not going to be able to hold up. Kansas has a great offense, very prolific. Uh, and so I'm going to lay the seven with Kansas. Uh, and I say, like I said, I think the Jayhawks win this by double figures. Yeah, I think the uh, audience is certainly going to be well lubed uh, for this contest because <laughs> you think? Uh, hanging out on Mass Street all uh, all morning, uh, loading up on bottomless mimosas, and then heading over to Boots. Why the hell not? They've had nothing to root for for years in football, and exactly. finally the Kansas Jayhawks are relevant. And you're right, uh, in a game uh, fit for the hardwood, 
Uh, I think they do win that one. It could be in convincing fashion. Uh, here's another one I absolutely love, and I'll give you uh, another one later on, too, in bonus time. But I've been hammering this. I've won it consistently three weeks in a row, as a matter of fact. Make it four. Give me the under on the Iowa Hawkeyes. 20.5 team total points against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I don't understand how on earth Iowa could score, you know, remotely close to 21 points. I know they scored uh, 27 last week, but that was Nevada. Rutgers actually has a pretty stout defense. They're only giving up 32.3 rushing yards per game, only 1.1 yards per carry on the ground thus far this season. Uh, Spencer Petrus has been horrendous uh, for the Hawkeyes, completing just 48.1% of his attempts. Uh, and Iowa, as a collective, uh, just averaging 217.7 total yards per game. So, you know, Rutgers is going to make Petras try to beat them. Uh, he will fold like a house of cards. And as a result, uh, I think Iowa on the road does not get to 21 points in what has 16 to 13 written all over it in this Big Ten affair. All right, without further ado, we'll have more college football a little bit later on. In bonus time, let's get after it, Lundy, with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. Oh, it's mandatory. Montgomery, uh, I do have a theme song for him. Oh, yeah. Face to face, I'm back to back. You she Wait for you. you. My shakes are tired. <laughs> killing me. Oh, yeah. Let's well, see. We, we played the extended version, the lead up. I cut that clip a little bit longer because I just like to listen to the idol uh, all the time and on a very high frequency. And I think uh, Mandatory Montgomery is going to be playing at a very high level this weekend. Why? It's a Houston Texans. Now, you watched uh, the your Denver Broncos and you were counting down the clock with the rest of the. Uh, crowd there at Mile High last weekend uh, because they still, you know, Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson are idiots when it comes to just basic clock management, football 101. But you notice that Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon had a lot of success on the ground, and that is going to be a theme with Houston, I think, all season long. They're giving up 4.86 yards per carry and uh, 287 yards in total to the running back position just on the ground alone. That's tops in the NFL, what they've surrendered so far this season. Montgomery was awesome against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the only silver lining in that game for the Chicago Bears, in my opinion, uh, you saw the Jukes on display, 3.56 yards after contact per attempt. He's forced to miss tackle. An absurd 31.3% of the time. He's getting over 70% of the opportunity share. Uh, I know he had a, a quiet week one against San Francisco, but again, I'm not scared of this Houston defense, which is a bit of a pushover. And I think the Bears get a lot of push up front as a result. So fade or follow my over, I guess it's a long way to get to the actual pick. The over 65.5 rush yards. Pull this one from points bet at minus 125. And truth be told, I would play this up to a very nice 69 and a half rush yards as well. Well, I'll give you a couple of different things. First of all, um, like over at DK right now, this number's already at 67 and a half. I would still play it. I would still take the over. But let me give you an early bonus time. This one is Ooh, also bonus. gone up. Uh, this has also gone up since early in the week, but you can play. I would play this number. So it's 67 and a half right now. I would still play it. Uh, like I said, that's the number that it is at DK. I would also double down, Brad, because of what I saw out of Houston last Sunday here in Denver. And I would play the over 88 and a half rush plus oh. receiving. Um, now that number opened, uh, I want to say at either 84 or 85, I can't remember exactly, but I remember seeing it, uh, about four, uh, maybe about 36 hours ago, uh, that it was actually a little bit lower. It's crept up just like his rushing number is. And part of the reason that I'm willing to play that, um, at the 88 and a half, he might do that just on the ground against Houston. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to lie. He might actually get into the eighties right there. Then all I need is what two catches. 
maybe for four and a half, five yards a piece. So I like this rushing prop with Monty, but I'm going to double down uh, on him against this putrid Houston defense. And I'm actually going to also take his rush plus receiving. So if you are all about the mandatory Montgomery like Brad and I are, I'm telling you, take, uh, 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 take the rush prop that Brad's got up here, but double down on the rush plus receiving. I think he hits them both. It will not be a bearish outcome for my guy. Hashtag mandatory Montgomery. Number four. Oh, let's go to another hot name and a guy coming off a century mark effort, a product of the Ohio State, and right now on pace to be the rookie wide receiver in fantasy foosball and uh, for backers as well in the player props market. And I'm taking the over yet again on Garrett Wilson. And this number seems low at 47 and a half receiving yards uh, at minus 115 at DraftKings. The Jets are taking on the Cincinnati Bengals this week. And you look at what uh, Wilson has done so far this season, 34 and a half routes run per game uh, and luring 22 total targets. That's 22 percent of the team's target share. So a handsome production there. He's got a lot of action out of the slot, but he's versatile. Uh, can line up outside and burn defenses as well. He is number four in total air yards as we speak through two weeks, and he's gone over this number in the first two games. He went 8-4 for 52 against the Baltimore Ravens, and then last week's 14 targets, eight receptions, 102 yards against the Cleveland Browns, who lost me a lot of cash last night. Uh, Got to see again, uh, and, and when he's lining up in the slot, Mike Hilton there, who has been targeted six times and get up five receptions this season for this underachieving Bengals defense. So, my friend, feed or follow Garrett Wilson over 47 and a half receiving yards, just minus 115 at DraftKings. Well, they're waiting for him to come back down to earth a little bit from a rookie standpoint, but you look at the Bengals, the Bengals have allowed three different receivers to get above this number so far this season. Um, and in fact, you had two of them last week uh, when you take a look at the Cowboys because, uh, you know, they gave up to what? Noah Brown had 91, I think. CeeDee Lamb had 75. So you're talking about, they've already done that twice. Deontay Johnson went for 55 against them in week one in that just it was just a eh, that was an ugly game. Um, but they're allowing receivers to be able to do this. Wilson should have a solid matchup. And I just think this is a low threshold. If this number were up in the low 50s, Brad, I might be a little bit more nervous about it. But the fact that it's sitting in the mid 40s, I think this is doable. Um, I, I think it's very much a, a number within reach. Even if he comes back down from last week, he can still get above this. Yeah, indeed. Back with the greenbacks, Garrett Wilson. Number three. Oh, let's go to a matchup between Tua Tagovailoa and Joe Burrow, a wet dream for you college football enthusiasts. Uh, remember maybe the past uh, somewhat fondly when these two went toe-to-toe uh, in a national title game that that long ago. But for me, uh, in this rematch on the pro circuit, I say Tua throws an INT. You get that minus 115 at BetMGM. Uh, Tua Uh, despite the spectacular surface numbers last week, did have two interceptions in that game. And you look at the Buffalo Bills, uh, five INTs overall. uh, They have secured so far this season. It's a team that is number one in the NFL in sack percentage. So they apply the pressure. And if Tua feels the heat, tries to thread a needle, he could get himself in trouble. Uh, Of course, he's got speed galore with Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill outside the numbers. but. Now, maybe he tosses a wounded duck, and it goes straight into a defender's hands, which I'm banking on in this game. Uh, Tua, so far, nine deep ball attempts, and I think if if he does commit a turnover, it's going to come on one of those passes beyond 20 yards. So, Lundy, fade or follow, is it going to be Tua time? If you're back in the interception prop for him, minus 115 at BetMGM. I like all the memes I saw this week that are reminding me how Tua leads all these different quarterback categories. Uh, For all of you meme generating types, uh, talk to me in two weeks. Um, That's that's all I got to say. There's a flash in the pan that happens for everybody. And I kind of like watching Tua play, but I'm sorry. He's not a six touchdown every week quarterback. Uh, Yes, he's going to throw a pick uh, in this one. I like uh, I like the idea. I also I. I don't know why this is like a TYG special. If you've followed me long enough, I trust your gut. I think TB12 throws a pick 
uh, this week as well uh, yeah. against the Packers. Uh, I'm just going to throw that one out there. I, like I said, I don't really have any indicator. I mean, the Packers are getting a decent pass rush, but they're not actually pulling down uh, any takeaways on the outside in the secondary. But for whatever reason, I think TB uh, winds up throwing one this weekend. So I like him for one. I like Tua for one. I think we may see some fun turnovers, may see some defenses get after it this weekend. But this one is my favorite of the bunch. I and Tua? Yeah, count me in. Number two. All right. Uh, one of my favorite receiving yards props of the week has got to be Darren Waller. And I'm taking the over on 47 and a half receiving yards, minus 114 right now at Bet MGM. Now, I, I grabbed this number when it opened at 48 and a half, and I thought for sure it would wind up somewhere in the low 50s at closing time, but the number has gone the opposite direction. And many of the books uh, I've seen as low as 46 and a half. And anywhere in the 40s, I, I would continuously hit the buy button on this prop. Uh, you look at Darren Waller, what he has achieved so far this season, 19.2% of the Raiders team target share he has seen. He's running close to 30 routes per game. So he's given a hefty workload to the tune of 14 total targets. Went for 79 against Arizona. And then 50, over 50, 51 to be exact, against uh, the L.A. Chargers last week. So he's easily achieved this. Number uh, Vegas, uh, you know, needs to win, but Tennessee's really got their backs against the wall right now. Uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. You could hear a chorus of Malik Willis chants coming from the stands here in short order. If Ryan Tannehill can't get his uh, crap together, but the Titans have allowed 8.3 pass yards per attempt. Done a decent job against tight ends, but they haven't faced it by the caliber of Darren Waller, who is going to be a baller on Sunday. So fade or follow Darren Waller over 47 and a half receiving yards minus 114 at Bet MGM. Well, you and I talked about this one off air yesterday. This is one of my favorite props of the weekend. And one of the reasons I really like it is because the number came down. Uh, it opened at 48 and a half. When I got it, it was actually at 46 and a half. Um, and then it's rebounded just slightly, as you point out, uh, and, and, at the 47 and a half. I still like it. Um, I like him for the mid 50s um, by the time it's all said and done. So even if, depending upon when you're consuming the pod or watching the video on the YouTube channel, um, if if this bounces back up again to 48, even though I got lucky, grabbed it at 46, don't care. Um, I think he's going to hit 50. So uh, to me, this is a no brainer. This is my one of my favorite props of the entire weekend. Yeah, and a uh, little, little early bonus time here, Lundy. A uh, little two-legger. You know, I love the two-leg uh, props uh, and parlays that are out there. If you want to take this down even lower to like, say, 40 receiving yards, I paired that with Derrick Henry over 70 rush yards on an SGP, and I got it at a plus 130. Ooh, that much plus odds with, with Henry at 70? At 70 yards, and it, it wow. seems like a get-right spot for him. I mean, Vegas has done a decent job defending the run so far this uh, season, but, you know, Derrick Henry's got to get at least 20 balls in the belly, and he's going to be highly motivated uh, to after, plow yeah. through the competition. Yep, yeah, no doubt about it. After a bad week, too, he definitely will be. Yep, no question about it. Make some Washingtons with Waller. Number one. All right, numero uno in the fade five in week number three is Joe Burrow over 261.5 passing yards. And this line has come up. Uh, it's a minus 120 right now at BetMGM. Truth be told, I locked and low this on the spreadsheet at 259 and a half when it opened. And it's all about Burrow and what he has said publicly. He says, hey, everybody, calm down. Take a chill pill, all right? We're going to be just fine. I know we're over so far this season. Uh, I know we've resembled uh, rubbish right now, and we look like uh, flattened squirrels on a highway. Uh, but the Bengals are going to bear their claws at some point, and they're going to do so vertically, I think, this week uh, against the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Already on Garrett Wilson. This game's got some sneaky shootout appeal. Uh, you got a team or a game total right now uh, in the 40s, and it could wind up in the 50s. And you look at Joe Burrow and what uh, he has done this season, uh, there's really nothing that is shocking by his underneath numbers, by any stretch of the imagination. A, a guy that's still getting it done at just completion percentage. Uh, he needs to throw the ball a bit more downfield. He's got suppressed production so far in air yards 
in YPA. But when you have T. Higgins, when you got Jamar Chase at your disposal, and uh, as well, Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst has really come on to become uh, a nice weapon for them in this passing game. This seems like a get right spot for him against what I feel is a middling secondary of the Jets. So overall, I'm all in on Burrow, even so much so that I also took the over on his rush yards prop at 11 and a half. And two, I like it for two passing touchdowns. But just for the sake of this exercise, Lundy, fade or follow, Joe Burrow over 261 and a half pass yards, minus 120 at BetMGM. Fade. Not feeling really? it. Yeah, I'm not feeling it for Burrow. Um, and, and look, I, I understand when we talk about what the uh, what the Jets defense has done so far in terms of holding quarterbacks down. Um, you're talking about Jacoby Brissett. Uh, obviously, I, I believe Joe Burrow is better than Jacoby Brissett, although <laughs> Jacoby looked pretty good last night. Um, yeah. And then Lamar Jackson as well. They've held both of those guys under 230 yards here so far this season. But I, I – I don't like this number. Um, I, I think Burrow could wind up at 250, 255. Um, so the fact that this has gone up, I actually am going to fade. I would take the under uh, on this number. I, I, I'm not buying it yet with Cincinnati. Um, I, I think they've got this funky Super Bowl hangover going on right now. Um, right now, their over-under win total is set at eight and a half, by mm. the way. Uh, if you do the quote unquote live line as we go week to week uh, with their win totals, um, this this team hasn't shown me uh, anything here so far. That game against Pittsburgh in week one was but ugly uh, for them. And then they turned around. It didn't look much better, in my opinion, in week two. So I certainly understand that Burrow is better than what we've seen. But I'm a little bit concerned about what he's going to wind up doing. So I'm going to fade you on this one. But then again, my NFL picks through two weeks have sucked ass. So don't pay any attention to me. <laughs> I'll buy it all day on Joe Burrow. We shall see what he finishes with. I think it's north of 270 here in the end. All right, uh, Lundy, let's make up some units, shall we? Because uh, I'm already dealing with a deficit, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast. I need some damn winners. So feed me in bonus time. What else you got for me? Uh, let's talk about some uh, college football, shall we? So this was kind of interesting. I'm going to throw this one out there. Try to follow along with me. If not, I'll put it up on the spreadsheet, and you guys will be able to do it. But uh, I uh, I logged into the old uh, the various books uh, this morning as you and I were getting ready for our uh, our podcast. And right there on the screen at DraftKings, it popped up for me, Brad, with a nice little 33 percent boost. Ooh. On a same game parlay for Florida and Tennessee, which is obviously oh. one of the marquee games tomorrow, two top 25 teams, uh, Florida uh, going into Tennessee, Tennessee ranked number 11. Um, now, I sit in Colorado where I am not allowed to do player props on the college side. That is one of the state laws here. Some of you can't. Boo! Boo! Yeah, Advanced! <clears throat> so... I had to do my SGP in with that game, uh, with the boost. I had to do it with just team props. So here's what I did. Uh, I brought the line down, Tennessee minus two and a half. Okay? Mm. I'm taking Tennessee over 27 and a half points. And I'm taking the under, and I bumped it up to 70 and a half. Under 70 and a half. I put all those together. It was a plus 115 take the 33% boost, it took it up to a plus 152. So there you go. There's a little SGP for you with some college football tomorrow. If you're like me and you've got that bonus uh, with the Vols and the Gators for tomorrow. Baseball, this is an alt-line totals parlay. Three legs for you for today. All of these games, Brad, have a seven and a half over under. I've taken all of them down to five and a half, and I've taken the over in all three. So I'm buying myself a two-run cushion for what I think is going to happen. Boston and New York, Cleveland and the Rangers, and uh, Detroit and the White Sox. Took them mm. all down to five and a half, took the over in all of them. That one pays a plus 170 at DraftKings. And last, let me give you two more college footballs on Saturday that I really like. Uh, I'm going to lay UCLA minus 12 and a half in the first half on the road north of me in Boulder against Colorado. CU sucks, everybody. Uh, they're awful. They are a complete and utter disaster right now. And I think UCLA is going to come out and blitz Kriegum in the first half. So I'm going to take the line 12 and a half in the first half for UCLA. Then Brad, a team you and I have talked about a couple of times. Let's talk about old dominion. Great country band. Yeah. So very good at covering. 
Uh, they're only laying five and a half against Arkansas State, and I got to find my number. Hold on. See all my – if you guys watching the video, you can see all my paperwork here in front of me. Hold on. Where'd it go? Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I will find what I <laughs> – there it is. Um, uh, Arkansas State has allowed 12 pass plays of 30 or more yards – this season, including 11 of those 12 in the last two weeks. If Old Dominion can give Hayden Wolf any time whatsoever in the pocket, you can burn these dudes over the top. So I'm laying five and a half with Old Dominion. Uh, that's a smart move. I love ODU. I've won some cash on them already this season. And fading Colorado uh, should be the oh, MO for everybody absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Fade the hell out of the buffs right now. They suck. Uh, let's stick in college football and along the front range. Give me Wyoming plus a 21 and a half at BYU. It's just too many points. Uh, Wyo three and one huge win against the Air Force Academy uh, last time out at home. And I know BYU is still licking its wounds coming off that 41 to 20 defeat against the Oregon Ducks. But the defense of the Cougs is the problem here. They're giving up over 160 rush yards per game. Wyo is averaging over 160 rush yards per game. I think they score the cover here in the end. And one of the one in a uh, really a toilet bowl is what it is. New Mexico State is laying five against Hawaii. Yes. And I like the Aggies at home. I like yes. Jerry Kills Bunch quite a bit. Uh, both these teams are rubbish. Both do not defend. But Hawaii is 100% allergic to defense or get up nearly 500 total yards per game. And New Mexico State did lose some close matchups to UTEP on the road and to Nevada. Uh, Hawaii's got a win. Yeah, but it was against uh, Duquesne. Who cares? Yeah. So I like uh, New Mexico State to cover the it five there. And let me throw this out there for you to prove how bad these two teams are in terms of the toilet bowl. There are 130 teams ranked by the FPI. New Mexico State and Hawaii are both in the bottom five uh, <laughs> of rankings, folks. They are crap. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you want to jump uh, on that one. And it's one of those, like, if you're going to play that kind of a crap bowl, give me the team uh, at home. And I love your Wyoming pick, Brad. Wyoming 6-3 and three against the spread in their last nine games. Yeah, I've been very good, except they didn't cover against my Illini, who uh, just keep on rocking and rolling. Evidence last night against Chattanooga. Elsewhere in the NFL at bonus time, I'm taking the discount on Christian McCaffrey rush yards. I'm going to take the over at 56 and a half on that number. I know he's dealing with some ankle stiffness, but he said he is going to play. The guy has forced a missed tackle on 40% of his touches so far this season with a 4.46 yak per attempt number. Uh, take it on the Saints. Yeah, I know they've been good against a run 3.75. This number is just too stinking low. Elsewhere for me, give me the under on Mark Andrews. And I got this one at 57 and a half right now. I actually locked it in at 60 and a half, but I still like the under 57 and a half. It's happened one time to Dalton Schultz uh, by the New England Patriots in their last 19 games. So I'm, I'm going to follow the trend there. He is going to be the point of emphasis for Bill Belichick. In the scheming this week, they're trying to take Andrews out of the game, uh, which also means I love Rashad Bateman over 46 yes. and a half receiving yards. It's way too low of a number. He's been over this twice uh, so far this season. 16.1 average depth of target for him. Uh, and again, it's just 46 and a half. And then last and certainly not least, a guy that I have disparaged so many times, but I'm extending an olive branch for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And I'm taking the over 15 and a half receiving yards against the disappointing Indianapolis Colts. Uh, CEH is averaging 13 routes run per game and is number one among rushers in yards per route run. Say that 10 times fast at 2.92. Uh, Indy has given up uh, north of this number to Rex Burkhead and Travis Etienne. And I think it happens again this week to C-E-H. And we are out of time here on the Feed 5 Podcast. Please rate and review us, uh, whether you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening uh, via your uh, AirPods. Uh, please, uh, whatever you're doing, drop us at rating and review wherever you consume us right now. Also, follow us on social media, uh, myself on Twitter at Nate, uh, Nate Lundy. Uh, I'm not Nate Lundy. I'm uh, Noisy Huevos. That's Nate Lundy, uh, who is far more handsome than me. But follow him on social media at Nate Lundy. Also cranks out 
a very visible and transparent picks spreadsheet. Until next time, good luck this weekend fighting the football. And until the next go around, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.